We're home! Adam's dad just dropped us off. What did you get up to? We've been playing and listening to fun kids. On the radio? Actually, it was on a smart speaker. Yeah, we just shouted Alexa, play fun kids. And it started playing songs we liked, not like your grown-up station. Oh, uh, well, we probably can't do that as we don't have Alexa, we have Google. Hey Google, play fun kids. How did you know how to do that? George, from The Breakfast Show, told us how it works on smart speakers. I should have known. He's very smart. Get Fun Kids on your smart speaker all around the house. Just tell it to play Fun Kids. This is the Fun Kids Bookworms podcast where you get to find out about the best books from the people who write them. I'm Bex and this week you're going to hear from Carnegie winning writer and illustrator Sydney Smith. We have got actual iconic illustrator Nick Sharrett and we have got the brilliant and hilarious Maz Evans doing a reading from her book as well. I'll be recommending a couple of other books for you to get your paws on but first let's check in with Sydney Smith shall we? So I'm joined right now by amazing illustrator Sydney Smith. Hey Sydney, how are you doing? Good, how are you? Thank you for having me. Oh no, uh, thank you so much for coming uh, to Fun Kids. I believe you're, uh, you're not in the UK. Whereabouts are you right now? I'm in Nova Scotia, Canada. So I'm on like, the east coast of uh, Canada. You're really far away, basically. You're in a part of the world. I don't think I've spoken to anybody in Nova Scotia before. So I can imagine yeah. from, from your, your your book is small in the city, but it doesn't sound right. like you really live in a city. Where Whereabouts is, is the city from the book based on? Yeah, well, we moved back to Nova Scotia. Our home is Nova Scotia. I was born here and um, all our family, my, my wife and I both have all our, most of our family is here in Nova Scotia. But for six years, we moved to Toronto, and Toronto is the biggest city in in Canada. It's got maybe more than six and a half million people. So I was going from a very small city of Halifax to a big city of Toronto. I don't. I'm sure this is common among all people from small towns or small areas. Going to the big city is overwhelming, and it takes a little while to get used to it. And often, you know, it it doesn't work out. And we loved it though. We really, really loved it. And so we were charmed by just uh, the excitement of living in the city and being surrounded by six and a half million, you know, unique people. Everybody's so interesting. And it's an adventure. Every day is an adventure in a big city like that. It's a good way to look at it. And is that kind of how you went into to making your book as well of like just showing the adventure of living in that city and of living in Toronto? Yeah, I think I what I really wanted to focus on was that, that feeling of being surrounded by so many people and so many things and uh, noise and um, uh, being stimulated by everything Mm -hmm. around you, but also really feeling quite isolated. And that's the one thing that really kind of got me when when I moved to the city is that, you know, you do feel quite a bit alone in a big city like that because everybody's, you know, it's a bit overwhelming to try to to speak and to, to approach every person that surrounds you as as the unique and interesting person that they are. Sometimes you have to put on your blinders and just kind of live your life. You know, it's funny you say that. When I first moved to London, my friend, I asked for some advice and he said, it's such a busy city and there's so many people around, but even surrounded by people, you can still feel a bit lonely. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I th- I feel like it's yeah, it's it's even more so in a big city like that. Tell me more about the book. So tell me what journey we go on in the book with your character. Yeah, so the, the, it starts off um on a streetcar, which is very unique to uh Toronto. Um I know that there are a few other cities in North America that do have streetcars as well, like I think San, San Francisco has some streetcars and a few other major cities in the states, but there's a kid on a streetcar that's where we start. And then they get they they leave the streetcar and the story starts. There's a little bit of a silent part at the beginning of the book and um it's kind of just sort of the the amuse bouche or like it's just sort of like the set the scene of uh of what's going to happen. It's not very clear who's who it is or um uh, where they are, but you get the impression that they're in a city and uh, you're seen from their perspective. And then the kid leaves the streetcar um, and the, the story starts. And it's, and it's the, the child who is narrating the book saying, I know what it's like to be small in the city. Saying pretty much, don't worry, I know what it's like 
you know, it's, it's noisy, it's busy, people don't see you, loud sounds can scare you, uh, construction sites pound and drill and yell and dig and all of these things kind of describing the city talking to um, someone. It's that's a great description. It's such a beautiful book as well, and the illustrations are incredible. You must have taken absolutely ages because they are so detailed. Yeah, I did take a while. I mean, I'm saying this now after have, struggling with a book. My, I'm I'm I have a quite a hard time with my second book right now as I'm writing it. This is my first book that I've I've written is Small in the City, and so looking back, I think, oh, that was such a such a a great time, an easy time. But my wife reminds me that I had a hard time on this first book too. <laughs> that I, I had a really difficult time with the writing and finding my voice. You know, it's my first book, so I didn't really know how I wanted to sound. Did I want it to be funny? Did I want it to be serious? Did I want it to be about sounds? Or um, I, I had lots of different versions of the story before I settled on this one of of the child looking for someone in a snowstorm. Well, you kind of smashed it first time then because you just won the uh, the Carnegie Kate Greenaway medal. Congratulations. Yay! Thank you so much. It's <laughs> yeah, amazing. it's it's I, it's still it feels weird when you say it. I haven't it's hard it's hard for me to accept that it's it's that's reality, especially because I all of the news and all of the celebrations have all taken place where I am right now in my studio oh. surrounded by like piles of paintings and stacks of books and old coffee cups and new coffee cups and yeah it's a uh, it's hard t- to wrap my brain around it it would be it would be easier if i was actually in london celebrating this this wonderful prestigious award and a highlight of my career um a couple of years ago wh- the last time it was on i did go to the award ceremony actually so i kind of remember what it was like and it is a lovely upbeat mm-hmm. celebration and i do feel bad for you mm-hmm. uh for not getting to, <laughs> to have that i feel like you deserve your own award ceremony H- have you done anything to celebrate this um well you know i can complain i can I, i'm not complaining because i did have an opportunity to receive the award a few years ago for another book. Okay. And so I know I know what it's like. I experienced that. It was a wonderful it was a wonderful um, trip. I went with my wife. We had a, a our firstborn was pretty young, but we left him with his grandmother. So we it was our first trip right. and we went to London and and, it, and experienced the whole um, ceremony which is a perfect ceremony if you you know, you ask me. I've been to a few award um, awards but not to mention that it's the oldest award for illustration and and judged by um, librarians who are experts in in this field. Oh my so, goodness, the gatekeepers of books, those librarians. The gatekeepers. Stuff, they? <laughs> they really are. Yeah. They are, they are. And you know, I, oh, uh, I, I from the from from my early childhood to to now I've I've owed librarians uh, so I owe, owe them so much. I mean, when I was a kid Libraries were my sanctuary because I was, you know, I, I needed a place to go and I, to be lost in a library is is not really to be lost at all. You're just, it's just a wonderful, um, it, it, exciting place to be. And it's calming, but it's like, you know, activates so much in your in your mind and imagination. And I'm, I'm sure that I am where I, I, I am where I am today because of um, libraries and librarians who have helped me. And have been my friends um, when I didn't really have any. I moved around a lot when I was a kid, so oh, so right. libraries were always the first place I went to when I was uh, in a new in a new home. So it must feel really special that uh, there are some kids out there right now who are going to pick up your book in a library and have the same feeling that you had. I hope so. Yeah, I really do. I mean, that's the dream that you make uh, something that really. Uh, can, uh, reaches out and connects with someone that needs it, you know, and uh, you can't plan on it. You can just make it and put it out there and hope that this it's like a message in a bottle that it finds someone who um, that needs it or that can um, respond. I don't know. Yeah. I'm glad. Um, I'm glad it's out there, though. It's. I'm it feels sure good. people will. Yeah. I mean, it's. It honestly, it's such a lovely book. Um, I know a lot of our listeners are kind of, kind of drawing at home and figuring out what they want to do. Can you? Do you have any advice, uh, for our for our listeners who are maybe thinking, well, maybe I could be an illustrator. Maybe I could be an artist. What's your top tips for them? If you want to be an illustrator of picture books or books for young people, the the 
thing that I always re- have to remind myself is that I, I just need to have fun. And that's something that doesn't, uh, that doesn't really need to be said to a lot of young artists because when you're young, p- drawing is playing and there's less pressure. But when you're older, all of a sudden, other voices start creeping in saying, oh, that's not as, you know, it's not as good as someone else's drawing or it uh, doesn't look the way that I wanted it to look. Uh, and, and you start to kind of freeze up and maybe become a little bit more um, angry at yourself for the drawings. But <laughs> it, if you if you stay with it and keep on having fun with it and keep exploring and um, experimenting, that's what I've been really into these days is just experimenting with different, different um, types of drawing and painting. But just keep that, uh, keep that that energy of having fun and don't listen to those voices that say it's not good enough or it doesn't look the way that it's supposed to um, because it's a journey. And um, before you know it, you will be drawing the way that you want and it will look the way that it's supposed to. But that happens when you're not, when you're not paying attention. It always happens after you um, lose yourself in, in, in it and enjoy yourself in the play of drawing oh that's beautiful advice thank you so much um so so yes sydney we should say that uh, your book is out right now uh, small in the city i imagine everybody who gets it um can feel very satisfied because they're they're buying an award-winning book let's face um and uh, thank you so much for talking to us all about it my pleasure thank you so much for um talking to me it's it's a wonderful treat for me Now, there's lots and lots of new books out at the moment. Uh, A few that have caught my eye include Jacqueline Wilson's new book. I got sent a very special, very early copy of this. It's The Primrose Railway Children. And to be honest, anything that Jacqueline Wilson writes, I'm on board with. So I cannot wait to read that one. Also, we got sent a book called uh, Grimwood by Nadia Shireen. It's been recommended by Richard Osman off of the TV, and it looks really funny. It's about two fox cubs who go on a bit of an adventure, and they find out that maybe where they've landed isn't home, but maybe at the end of the day kind of is. And it looks really funny, really exciting, and I'm looking forward to reading it. And hopefully we'll get to chat to Nadia very, very soon about this book, because I have a feeling... It might be a might be book of the month for the July. I'm just going to put it out there. It might be book of the month for July. Also, I should mention, we didn't say last week. I interviewed Andrew Petty about his new book. It's called Listified. It's Britannica's 300 lists that will blow your mind. And I decided that is my book of the month for June. It's a bit different because normally we do fiction books for book of the month. But you know what? Andrew Petty's Listified was so good and I was so engrossed in it, I decided to give it the big award. So there you go, Andrew, if you're listening, that one is for you. Now, moving on, I did say that we'd be speaking to illustrator Nick Sharrett, and here's a little snippet of my chat with him. Uh, so I'm joined right now by incredible illustrator and writer Nick Sharrett. Hello, Nick. Hello there. Oh, my goodness. I feel like I'm talking to royalty, to kids book royalty. <laughs> this is incredible. Yeah, I, I guess you read my uh, the books I illustrated when you were uh, younger then. Yes, I think pretty much every book you've ever made, I think oh. I've uh, I've had in my hands. Um, Noisy Poems, I think I read that, and then it all went on from there, really. Yeah. Really? Oh, well, that was a good choice, because that was the very first book I ever illustrated. Oh, was poems. it? Yeah, yeah, wonderful. Yeah, that was the very, that was my breakthrough, Noisy Poems, into the oh, world of it? children's books. Yeah. I think it's because when I was little, I, I did love poetry, and I loved, obviously, your, your style as well. It's kind of eye-catching. And I think my parents must have seen it and been like, this is the book for her. And yes. um, yeah, and, and then it just means that I've, um, as I'm sure a lot of our listeners will be, I see your drawings and I feel like you're, I'm in a safe pair of hands if I see that your name and your pictures are attached to a book. Oh, well, that's very nice of you to say. Thank you. Well, I, I do get to work for some fantastic writers. So um, I'm very lucky with the people that I team up with. And uh, uh, it's it's wonderful to illustrate their books. Uh, but first, I want to talk about your book because you've got uh, yes, book yes, out. of course. I do my own books as well. Yes, we should we should yes. probably talk about that. I suppose <laughs> we you're should, here. shouldn't we? Yes, yes. My <laughs> latest book, uh, Tea Party Parade, which um, has just come out. So I'm thrilled about that. Yes. Am I right in saying it's part of your kind of Little Gem series? It is. It's the second book that I've done for Barrington Stoke and their Little Gems um, series. And well, they're called Little Gems. They are. They're lovely tactile books to hold and look at. And they've been specially designed for 
easy reading and uh, to make reading a really pleasurable experience um, for all kinds of children. And the book itself is all about class one who are putting on, uh, I've got to say, quite an impressive parade for the rest it's, of the, uh, the school. It's not bad, is it? Yes, it's actually, a par- it's, kind of, it's based on a, a true incident when I used to live off at a primary school. Um, I live in Brighton. And uh, one day I looked out of my window and I saw children dressed up as cakes and they were <laughs> parading around the playground. So it, that's where that and the memory of it has always stayed in my mind. And this was a long time ago. So those children are grown up now, but um, the memory stayed with me. And, and it was lovely to actually finally be able to, to, to make use of it and put, turn it into a story. Did you ever find out why they were dressed up as cake or did you just assume they were having no, a No, I did. I did. I, it's because uh, in... In Brighton and Hove every year, um, in normal years, there is a wonderful, that's Brighton Festival. And as part of it, to kick it off, there is a children's parade uh, in May. And this, uh, and all, and lots of schools across the city take part in it. And um, these children were per- practicing for, for taking part in the parade. I see. Yeah. So in, in your version, in the book, uh, I have to say the costumes are pretty good. We've got um, we've got some Swiss rolls, we've got some Victoria sponges, we've got juice, yeah. we've got teacups. I, if if my teachers had been able to do that, I would have told them to go and have a career in costume design. Well, uh, to to be honest, that well, I remember the sponge cake. I don't remember the other costumes. So I've I I put in some of my favourite cakes. To be perfectly honest, I love Swiss <laughs> rolls, so I thought I'd have to put that in. It is lovely seeing the costumes though, because it's just so much fun, isn't it? Like a tea party is always going to be fun, but wearing a cake on you is amazing uh, which was your favorite one to draw uh i think it was the swiss roll actually swiss yes roll. i was quite pleased with that I, I i invented their little routine the children are all dressed as slices of swiss roll and then um at one moment in the parade they all come together and make a, a whole swiss roll by standing in a line and I, I have to say i was rather pleased with myself for coming up with that bit of choreography i did chuckle <laughs> to myself when i saw that bit i was like yeah that's a great idea and when i went i mean I don't want to ruin it for the listeners, but when the um, when the whole of the slices come together to form one perfect circle. Oh yes, yes. Now that's what I witnessed in the playground. So that <laughs> is actually based on on a, 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 on truth. Yes, I actually saw that happen. Oh wow! Oh, my goodness. Yeah. So which which for this book came first? Was it obviously you had the idea, but then did you write it first, or then did you think I know what I want to draw, and then you want me the drawings first? Um, I had the idea. I just knew I wanted to exploit that that memory because uh, this book is a follow up to uh, my first. Um, Little Gems book, which was called Splash Day, which was about based on another true event that I saw in uh, or I learned about at a Brighton primary school where they have this wonderful day in the summer term when all the children come in with their water pistols and spurters and buckets (laughs) and squeezy liquid bottles and the staff all join in and they all dress up in swimming costumes or, you know, waterproof clothing and they have the most spectacular and um, extraordinary water fight in the playground and uh, so I'd heard about that at another Brighton school and I thought that sounds like a brilliant idea for a story so that was my first one and then I was thinking wouldn't it be lovely to sort of turn this into a a little series so I I, I, that brought to mind the tea party I've been doing uh, uh, this job for a long time and I have got lots of ideas stored away and sometimes you just have to wait for the right moment and and it all comes together and then you can you finally make use of those those memories that are stored away somewhere. Ah, oh, lovely stuff. Nick was amazing. I was a bit nervous talking to him because he's, you know, quite a hero in kids' books, but he was brilliant. Now, speaking of heroes in kids' books, I was at the Barnes Children's Literature Festival over the weekend and I got to speak to Sir Michael Morpurgo. Yes, him, off of Warhorse, Private Peaceful, Running Wild. I mean, all of the books you've probably read, basically. He's written, I think, over 190, he said, and he was incredible. We got to talk in front of a live audience about what he's been up to, about his new book, A Song of Gladness, and just about how he spent lockdown, his love of nature, his inspirations. He was an incredible person to speak to. I also got to host a chat with Elle McNichol. Now, she is a brand new author. She wrote A Kind of Spark and Show Us Who You Are, um, A Kind of Spark you might have heard of because it won the Blue Peter Book Award for Book of the Year. Big deal. She was also inspirational she was dreamy she told me all about um how she writes why she writes and she gave me a few exclusives as well about the next book she is writing in fact i think she's writing three books at the same time which to be honest blew my mind 
I can't believe that she has that kind of discipline about her because I definitely don't. Anyway, another person I bumped into at the Barnes Festival was Maz Evans. She's a friend of the show, so I thought it would be rather fitting to hear a reading from her right now. Hi, Maz Evans here, author of Who Let the Gods Out and now my new book, Vi Spy, License to Chill. Vi Spy is the story of 11-year-old Valentine Day who finds herself caught between her divorcing parents, a mother who's a retired spy and a father who's a retired supervillain. So it's pretty tough to be Vi. Whilst all this is going on, while she's fighting uh, battles at home, she's also trying to prove to the world that she too can be a brilliant spy and save the world from the dark forces of Umbra, the evil supervillain who's trying to control the minds of everybody in the world. I would love to read for you uh, the very first bit of my book to give you a little taste of Vi Spy License to Chill. And the first chapter I have very imaginatively called Chapter One. Spies are rubbish at keeping secrets. Not your big, it's a matter of state security secrets. Obviously, they have to be good with those. After all, They wouldn't be much of a spy if they posted a selfie on Twitter while parachuting into a top secret enemy lair. Hashtag, it's under the volcano. (laughs) No, the big stuff is safe. You have to protect the code to the Prime Minister's chocolate safe. Go ahead and tell a spy. You need to hide the world's first laser guided intercontinental water pistol. A spy will know just the place. You've discovered that brain sucking aliens are invading Surbiton. A spy will take that information to their grave and hopefully to Surbiton. But personal secrets, forget it. If you're organising a surprise party, say nothing to a spy. There will be undiscovered species in the Amazonian rainforests will turn up on Tuesday with sausages on sticks. You mustn't tell a spy your suspicions about the lady from the corner shop. There'll be a SWAT team trained on her pick and mix before you can say, Mother Brown. And don't ever ask a spy to keep that funny thing about your mum quiet. Imagine mum's face when she sees her pink leopard print knickers on the six o'clock news. It's true. Spies are rubbish with secrets. And no one knew this better than Valentine Day. Valentine's mum was a spy. Valentine knew this because, like all spies, her mum was rubbish at keeping it a secret. There was the time her mum got Arthur Tilsley's dad arrested at the PTA casino night because she was convinced he was concealing dynamite in a bin. It was actually his wife's disgusting sausage rolls. All the time she trained next door's dog to sniff out explosives and it attacked Fred the postman for delivering sparklers to number 12's bonfire party. All the time she abseiled from the top of the supermarket multi-storey to catch the last post. Which was actually incredibly cool. Yes. Valentine was convinced her mum was a spy and on an unremarkable Friday in her unremarkable home in her unremarkable town Valentine Day was determined to prove it Lovely stuff, thank you so much to Maz Evans and thank you to Nick Sharrett and Sydney Smith and thank you to you as well for listening If you've enjoyed the podcast, remember to like, follow, subscribe wherever it is you get your podcast from and I'll hopefully see you soon Bye Okay, enough screen time. Oh, Dad, can you listen to the radio instead, please? I suppose so. They play some good tunes on... Not your boring grown-up station. It's not. Thank it, please. We can get that downstairs on the smart speaker, not in the bedroom. It's okay. We can get it on the app. If you say so. Okay. Thanks, Dad. Now, let me have your tablet. Screen time is over. About that, you just said we can listen on the app. And the app is on our tablet. It was downloaded from the App Store for free yesterday by Mum. But... You did promise. Listen anywhere. Smart kids listen on Smart Speaker. This is Fun Kids.